Siami, Siami family. Today we're going to be talking about baggage. What is baggage? And how can we heal from baggage? Because we know that there's a lot of hurt uh, amongst the family. And this is a time of healing and restoration. So we're going to talk about this elephant in the room of baggage so that we can heal and move forward to whatever next relationship that that is. And so this is for everyone, not just for married people, for those that are um, contemplating on getting married or married or just in general, because it's good for all relationships. So we know that the most high is restoring us and he's healing us. So, and he's using many people uh, to do that as well. So um, welcome. We have a, a panel on that's going to uh, be discussing about uh, this year issue and what we can do to move forward with the uh, the baggage. Um, and so we're going to ask Brother Rick if he could lead us in prayer before we start, please. Kimball, Kimball, Tata Nazambi, you deserve all the Kimball, Father. We thank you, we love you, we honor you, we praise your holy name, Father. Father, we thank you for gathering us here once again to glorify your name, Father, to edify you and the people, Father. So we ask, Father, that you allow the Moinda Semi to use us all mm. during this teaching and to bring a light to anyone that can uh, thinking about marriage, already married, uh, married, uh, engaged to all of the people who can get something from this teaching father. So in your mighty son's holy name, we pray in the name of Yesiah Congo. Yes. Yeah. Get them. Get All righty. So we have a group of people, he, people here that I've asked to come on to help discuss about uh, baggage. And it's a wealth of experience. Uh, we have uh, Yaya Wanda. Uh, we, and I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves as well. We have um, my dear sister, Sarah Singer. My dear sister, uh, Leticia and Sharon, and Rick. Did I get everybody? Yes, yes. So they're gonna be um, the panelists discussing about baggage and what we need to do to move forward, uh, how we can heal so that we will not be bringing um, past hurt into mm -hmm. our new relationships causing issues. This is the time of healing, and this is the time of restoration. So I'm going to give each of you an opportunity to introduce yourselves. I do want to say that combined with all of the people on here, we probably have almost 100 years worth of experience on here from life experience and so forth and so on. So we have a wealth of experience here. I know that uh, life is the best teacher. Life is the best yeah. teacher. So we have <clears throat> wealth of experience. Also, uh, we have several people on here that have uh, degrees also that uh, with the school and, and training and relationships. Sarah Sing Singer is one. Uh, my dear friend Sharon, she has a bachelor's degree in uh, case management. Uh, she is a nurse for over 20 some years. I'm not going to get into all of that. You all can introduce yourselves however you feel that you know you desire. So we're going to start with you, Yawanda, please. Timmy, everyone. Um... I guess as a, one on the panel, I have been married before. And as a single person for many years, I have also, I'm going to use the term dating because it really, really wasn't what I would consider courting. And I've just read and I've studied a lot. Um, I, I believe the Most High has given me a passion for healing and having people come into a relationship correctly so that it will be successful. Yes. 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 All right, Leticia and Rick, you guys want to go next? Sure. So uh, I'm Leticia, 
And this is my husband, Rick. We've been married for 11 years together for 15. Um, I, um, I'm in the dental field. So we, uh, I work with the public a lot. And um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much it for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, just like she said, um, my name is Rick and uh, I have a, um, a I've, you know, I, I've had a couple of years. So I went to the University of, uh, well, Dell State University and uh, for a couple of years. And but I often say that I I graduated from Hard Knocks University. There you go. <laughs> and <laughs> and my my wife has a uh, degree as well. I don't know, I don't know why she. Didn't oh, I'm sorry. It. I totally forgot about <laughs> it. Uh, degree in arts and sciences. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you know. We, you know, we we've been together for fifteen years, right? So, uh, that's that's not exactly uh, veteran years, but it's it's more like sophomore years, you know. So we we have um, got over that seven to ten year uh, hump in 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 marriage years, and so we know that that a lot of marriages don't make it over that seven yeah. to ten year mark. So whatever we can offer to those people who are, have not uh, reached those years and, and possibly, you know, struggling a little bit, you know, we just, we, we, we're here to offer what, what our experiences and, and what we learned from those experiences and, and hopefully and share those experiences. And hopefully, you know, you can, we can save you a couple of headaches um, in the process. In the process. Yes. Yeah. All right, Miss Sharon. Hello, uh, everyone. Again, like Brenda said, we've been friends for over 20 years. Um, grateful for the opportunity to be on the panel. Um, again, my name is Sharon. I've been married before, um, now single. Um, and just learned a lot about myself in the process, um, a lot about others. Um, and it is just good to be in, at this place in my life for myself. And, and just from the experiences Brenda said, and even as Rick said about School of Hard Knocks, um, it's been uh, definitely a learning experience and grateful for it. So just grateful to be here. Thank you, thank you. Glad to have you on. Sarah Singer. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Greetings. Um, my name is Sarah Singer. I have a background in international relations, culture, and politics of the African diaspora. Um, I study specifically, um, excuse me, um, reconciliation within international relations, group conflict, um, and um, what else did I study? I, I've studied, I feel like as, as though I'm a student of cross-cultural communications and conflict resolution, ultimately. Um, and it, personally, I would qualify, quote unquote, qualify myself um, based on life experience. Um, I am single, have never been married. I have been proposed to several times. <laughs> And I say that to give context, which I'm sure we will we will discuss. Um, but I just love the topic of self improvement. Yes. And when I hear um, baggage, I was like, Oh, I could talk about this for forever. <laughs> I said, Let's talk about it. Because <laughs> every other time I talk about it, I don't want to. I want to be. Of course, we want to be heard. Um, and not, not talk to a deaf ear. So I'm just honored to um, be a part, contribute and listen, because we can always learn things in this, in this space. 
All right, all right. Thank you all for agreeing to come on. Uh, those of you uh, that are right now that are not on the panel, I ask that you mute yourself for right now. Then eventually you guys can come on, ask questions, comment, whatever. You can raise your hand, da 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 da, whatever. You know, just let me know, raise your hand. So, but those of you that have been asked to come on, uh, unmute yourselves. And we're going to dive into this thing. We're going to go deep, deep to the hurt deep to the oh, pain, the right. disappointment, the mm. anger, the resentment. We're going to mm. pull all the ugliness out. Yeah. We got to face the demons so we can heal. And that, is, right. that, that is why we're on so that we get presenting this so that we can heal. Mm -hmm. So um, the first question that I, I have is I want each of you in your own way to tell me what do you think baggage is? What, what does it mean to you? Anybody can go. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so to me, baggage is weight, unnecessary weight that you carry. And trust me, baggage is spiritual. So a spiritual weight that you carry that can weigh you down and pre prevent you from moving forward. It can also be a, an emotional weight mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. All right, all right. Very good. Spiritual weight, emotional weight. All right. I agree. I concur with them as well um, as the weight in reference to every area of our life. Um, even weight that we may not even uh, be aware of. Yes. <clears throat> and so that too is baggage. Um, and not even being aware of it. So, I mean, definitely I agree. A weight. I would certainly say the same in terms of unconscious or conscious, um, emotional, mental, and spiritual, undealt with, <laughs> um, un undealt with trauma. Yeah. That's what I would say. You yeah. said undealt with undealt. promises? Trauma. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Can I, can I read uh, what will sound somewhat like a clinical yes. uh, definition of Go emotional ahead. baggage. Go ahead. Emotional baggage is the intangible but very real emotional weight. This is the thing we've already identified. We carry due to unresolved issues or trauma from previous relationships or childhood. Mm -hmm. Until we face these issues, will most likely bring our baggage into each new relationship. Mm. I like that definition. Wow. I like that. So we have established that it is conscious or unconscious, uh, emotional, you know, psychological, past trauma from relationships or childhood that have not been dealt with. Mm -hmm. And that it carries over into all our relationships, be it marriage, friendship, whatever, mm -hmm. when it's undealt with. And it causes mm -hmm. a lot of friction, unnecessary friction. So, um, yes, uh, Manzambi said a lot of stress comes with that as well. So... Now, my next thing is I would like for you all to, to, to tell us or discuss about the different types of the trauma, the conscious and unconscious that you are aware of that is present um, amongst us, you know, as a people, as individuals, as a whole, as in relationships, so forth and so on. Um, and anybody can start with that. Well, when you say trauma, First thing that comes to mind is, especially in the Isolele uh, community, we have a, a problem with family secrets and where you have a lot of, uh, a lot of young girls and young boys who may, uh, may have gotten molested or 
traumatized in some in, in some type of uh, sexually uh, touched or or traumatized in in that kind of way, and it tends to get hush hushed and pushed under the rug. And, it, and typically, a lot of times, it, it gets pushed under the rug because it's a family member that is the perpetrator, right? Mm. So mm. a lot of times, you have uh, you know whoever big mama and them or whoever your parents. Mm doesn't want to talk about it because it's the cousin or the uncle who, who, who did the offense. And, and so, or you may get blamed for it. A lot of times the child feels like they're to blame for it and, and, mm. and, and the parents uh, or the mother, whoever typically kind of sick, send mm -hmm. off those sick, <laughs> like, you know, like the child, like it wouldn't happen if, if the child didn't do X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. so a child grows up like that. Uh, when you, when the, when that child becomes an adult, that's and 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 uh, or or not even before adulthood, like in 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 the adolescent, well, the teenage years, right? And so and and their whole perception of of sex and carries on <clears throat> to you know. Uh, when they're, you know, they're uh, maybe pr uh, promiscuous, uh, maybe not, but by the time they get into adulthood, <clears throat> all of that baggage, all of that suppression, all of that, uh, you know, manifests itself mm -hmm. into emotional uh, strain and hurt. And mm -hmm. by the time that person is getting married, uh, or find himself in a marriage, you know, all of those, all of that baggage is carried over into the marriage. And, and, um, and so, uh, you know, I found out that a lot of times that when we choose a mate, a lot of times we don't, we don't dig deep and ask the questions that we need to ask when we when we are when we're dating or courting someone, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it doesn't bubble up to the surface, and and to after you know after you say the I do's and and that sort of thing. So, but I said all that to say it it, it has to it has to be dealt with. It has to be talked about. It has to be. Um, brought to the forefront because we know that from a spiritual perspective <clears throat> that the devil works in secret the devil works in the darkness mm -hmm. so as long as something remains in the dark mm. and not brought out to the light yeah. and, that, and that gives shaitani all of the the uh, ammo he needs to torment that person mm -hmm. and to chip away at their self-esteem and their confidence and and have them feel in some kind of way uh, all their lives. And so it's just neat. it's just something that as a community, as a people, it's just something that that's one of the biggest problems I see with us. And and it's never it's never it's not dealt with properly with us. Let me add add a story to that. I actually have a friend whose daughter experienced that very thing. And this is real. Her ex-husband, who was her husband at the time, was molesting her daughter because it was like a second marriage. And between the years of eight and 12 years old. And the result of that, the damage, is that she could not get close to any men of her age group that was interested in her. So even when they were interested and wanted to get married, she, she just couldn't, she just couldn't. And I remember her, uh, the conversation came up because we were, you know, prayer partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will say, um, I have a friend who dealt with that uh, similar situation. When we were younger, they were in foster care um, but one of the reasons why they were in uh, foster care was because uh, the the they were twins, one one male, one female. The male twin was being molested by a cousin, a male cousin, 
And so what happened is when he got into foster care, one of the other foster care kids that uh, my mom friend had, uh, he ended up doing the same thing that was done to him. So my point in bringing that up is darkness spreads and it festers. Mm. Yeah. So when you keep things in the dark and you don't handle or deal with things, then somewhere in that child's mind, they say, this must be okay. Mm -hmm. It must be okay. And they don't, they don't really know how to rationalize or, or process what's happening. And so somewhere in their mind, it's okay. So then he goes and he does it to somebody else. And, and who knows that young boy that, was, that is now the victim is now becoming the predator uh, to somebody else. So it keeps mm -hmm. happening. So, you know, that's why we need to expose all dark areas in our life. And actually, there's a scripture that talks about that. But we as a people, as Black people, as you, you, many of you all have stated, <clears throat> we sweep these things up under the rug. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deep. I said we're going to dive deep. So we know that this is happening in the homes because generally they say research states that it's someone that is close, an uncle, cousin, brother, uh, or whomever. It's someone that is very close to that individual. Usually it is not a stranger most of the time that um, does these, these things. With that being said, we know that there is a lot of this going on in churches today uh, mm -hmm. that is swept up, up under the rug. Mm -hmm. rug. I've, I've heard some things. Mm -hmm. I've heard some things from people personally that are adults that their pastor or former pastor has done mm -hmm. to them. And they did not want to say anything because they felt as if uh, someone had mentioned that the, the child wouldn't be believed. Well, guess what? The adult also felt like that they wouldn't be heard and that nobody would believe them and that they did not want to uh, perhaps uh, damage their family that they had. But these things need to come out. So let's, let's talk about this, this demon that's in the church that is happening amongst pastors in the church that are molesting. It's a lot of pastors that are molesting boys. How do we deal with that? What, 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 what can we do to bring this to the surface? Because a majority of the time when, when, a male or female is molested, it impacts them in one or two ways. Either there's going to be an increase in promiscuity, and, and this is research, and, and, and I've seen it. There's going to be an increase in promiscuity, or they're going to go with the opposite sex. So if it's a, if it's a, a, a female that has been molested by a male, she's going to have issues with the male, as Yawanda stated. And, and a lot of times, or sometimes, they will uh, have this internal hate or disregard for males, and it will cause them to go to lesbianism. So we already know it's a spirit behind it because of that, because that's, that's not of a, a yah. So let's deal with this, and let's talk about that in the church. Um, if I may, I my perception of... Of, of sexual abuse um, and, and when we, we, we desire to reach the root of the conversation or the root of the issue itself, um, I equate it to emotional literacy and or emotional um, articulation and, uh, and emotional awareness. Um, specifically because I think one of the things that plague our communities is um, being being emotionally numb or emotionally um, mm. void. not being able to have the ability to articulate and understand our feelings because of the fact that they have been suppressed for so long so the amount of time and the behavior that is built within the suppression doesn't necessarily equate or on the flip side that there is no vocabulary to share feelings when they do come up so the behavior of of expression is so uncomfortable so foreign so unfamiliar that it does show up within the behavior of being um being silent being numb lashing out being promiscuous being all of the the things that you just mentioned so and, and like um, Sister Letitia stated, that typically when one behavior is done to you, 
you the behavior because it's never addressed it's then condoned and then oftentimes repeated yes and so because of that habitual practice and of course, what we know to be our history in terms of how buck breaking and all of these other elements that have oh. been um, culturally condoned mm -hmm. um, and, and called our own, I truly equate being heard as one of the, the biggest solutions, being able to have conversation. Um, one thing that I know is super powerful is when you go to a therapy session, one of the first things they always do is they give you a feelings chart. And although it just seems like the most rudimentary, like annoying, juvenile, like, why are you handing me this? Do you really think I need this? Like, it's so <laughs> convicting. It's so convicting to the fact of, do you know your emotions? Mm. Can you articulate more than happy, sad, and mad? You know what I'm saying? Like, are there other adjectives in your vocabulary that you know how to, um, you know, conclude to and express? And then within that expression, like you said, so many other, so many who do express themselves are met with all of the other, you know, diversion, shame, yeah. all of the, 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 the different uh, reactions. And so then it's like, okay, now that I have these emotions and I know how to have, I, I know that I have them, how do I address them? Yes. And not mm -hmm. only address them interpersonally, but how do I set my standard so that I know how I feel, I know how to address them, but what am I willing to tolerate when someone else won't address them? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like all of these things are compound they build mm -hmm. upon each other. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing I'll say within this segment is, is that it narrows down to um, self-understanding and self-reflection, identity um, and the standards in which you base upon yourself and how you understand yourself. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any comment on that before we move on? Sister Sarah said something, and one of the things that I was going to mention as far as um, what are some of the symptoms of, of emotional baggage, and that's emotional unavailability. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the result of these experiences that young people have, uh, or even older people have when they have emotional baggages. If it's not cleared and if it's not dealt with and understood, then they are not emotionally available to anyone that they try to enter a relationship with. Exactly. And I, if, if I may say, in response to that, when we are all human and we have natural maturation cycles, we have natural mm -hmm. cycles and desires. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I'm getting older now. I want to be in a relationship. I desire family. These mm -hmm. are natural inclinations of life. And the ability to differentiate what you want and what you're ready for or what you emotionally want are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to be married or I want to have kids, but am I emotionally mature or emotionally sane, essentially, mm -hmm. to encounter those activities? Mm -hmm. and, I think, and, I, and are you spiritually mature? Exactly. You know, all exactly. of those things that prepare you for that. Because what you said is that all of us want to, that's because the most high made us that way. We're mm -hmm. not made to be single or abused or traumatized. That, that's not what we bring into relationships. He did not create us to be like that. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Sharon, what, what would you say are some types of uh, trauma that we as a people people deal with you know specifically to to us in our community i'm talking about black people what are some 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 things that you have seen you know even in your line of, of work you've worked in different arenas in healthcare. uh you know what what have you seen not just even uh, experience yourself perhaps yeah. if you're willing to share not, not just uh spiritual i mean sexual abuse but also along with that the alcoholism um, that we see in our community, the drugs, 
and the effects that it has on the kids as well as the family as a whole. Um, I have a whole lot more to say, but my <laughs> communication is limited. My son could be breakfast this morning and he's right here. So that's why I was like, I got a whole lot more to say, yeah. but it's very limited. But um, definitely it is more, so much more. So much more. I mean, and even for myself personally, but um, definitely it's, it's a lot. You said your son is there by you. Yeah, he's actually just cooked me breakfast. <laughs> Z, you got to get a lot of that, man. <laughs> we got to talk. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Wow. Man. In, ad in addition to the addictions, alcoholism, drugs, there's pornography as well oh, yeah. that impacts, you know, in our community that will impact relationships, particularly yeah. marriage. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, speak, I'm sorry. Speaking of uh, pornography, um, it could be as simple as if a child is exposed to pornography at a young age, some images you can't unsee. Mm -hmm. So it continues to play in your head. So, you know, they then now they're looking for this thing subconsciously of what they saw until they become of an age. And, you know, once they get into school and they're around other kids that are, were probably exposed to the same thing, now you have the conversation buzzing mm -hmm. until the, and it leads into experience. So, you know, uh, I brought that up because she mentioned pornography. That is definitely something that um, I believe is hurting us as a community um, because we're dealing, uh, I, I said this before, Iso Lele has been dealing with that, that lust spirit for a mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. of the ways that it plagues us is through pornography. Yes. And, and the thing that I don't, you know, maybe I'm moving ahead, Brenda, because perhaps you're going to move to adults and things like that. But it also, their adults are doing that as well. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to go into marriage still hanging on to pornography. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. absolutely. You know, I want to circle back around to something that Sarah had mentioned. Um, and that was the, that we being people that have been become emotionally numb. So I said, we're gonna dive deep. So when she said that we are emotionally numb and that is why we, a lot of times tend, tend to not discuss it and sweep it up under the rug, we can go all the way back to the fact that we have dealt with so much trauma as a people uh, from slavery that we have not, discussed or healed from so for people to tell us just get over it you can't because you have to understand from a scientific perspective they themselves even say in healthcare in science that trauma is within our dna mm -hmm. so knowing that we as a people have dealt with your kids being used as gator bait women being raped in front of their husbands and can't say anything using our young men for buck breaking and a host of, of numerous things with no regards, with no, no, um, no feelings or remorse about it even today. We were just talking about, and uh, this was in our family Bible study. Yeah, our family Bible study. We were talking about forgiveness and healing. I said, when you look at the Bible, uh, repentance and forgiveness go hand in hand. So when we repent, there's forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't, if we don't uh, uh, repent, the forgiveness is not there for us. We have to repent first. Mm -hmm. Okay, that includes too on, on just day to day living. If 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 someone is constantly hitting you, hitting you, hitting you, just you say, "I forgive you," "I forgive you," that is not normal. You, you're not you. The forgiveness should not be there. It can't be there when there is no repentance. I don't care what nobody say. It does right. not align with scripture. If I don't come to the most high and say, forgive me, there's no, there's no repentance. Mm -hmm. right. There can't be no repentance because I am not remorseful. I am not right. asking for forgiveness. Right. So right. our people in the church talk about 
Okay, when things are done to us as a whole with the killing and no justice, mm -hmm. and then we forgive, there has been no forgiveness, people. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. I mean, I'm sorry, there has been no repentance yeah. on their part. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're, they're not, in other words, we, we do as a people, especially the church, uh, and, or, 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 or believers, we are so quick and, and, and this is what comes in with that weak Christianity uh, that's been taught to us through the church is that that we are constantly forgiving, forgiving, forgiving. And, and we forgive our oppressors for everything they've done to us. But here's the problem. Our, our oppressors have not asked, they have not repented. Right. They have, they have not asked for forgiveness from us. So for us to offer forgiveness when when they have not uh, apologized a repentant heart or, or or exactly when they have not come to us with a repentant heart, then then our our forgive then our forgiveness is a little premature. Exactly. Yes. And so, go ahead, Sarah. I was just going to say that is something that is um, within social media. That is a, a topic that is just now being addressed, which is labeled as spiritual abuse. Um, and when we talk about the traumas of, of the church or religious, uh, um, that is a huge, huge, huge a gap, unspoken, newly identified trauma within a lot of our communities because when you think about like uh the newer generations or just individuals in general who stray from the church mm -hmm. spiritual trauma or or condoning negative behaviors in the name of spirituality or in the name of you know someone else's authority or in the name of it being okay to a god figure you know what i'm saying um, and when you talk about rape and all of these things from pastors and ministers, and that is essentially being condoned because of the position of the individual. And again, there is no repentance being done with the forgiveness, which leads to the, um, no, the, the self suppress or emotional suppression mm -hmm. and, um, things going unaddressed and right. that's the, the cyclical process. So you know what I, I'm thinking, and I, I hear what you said, Brother Rook, and I, I really appreciate that, you and Sister Sarah. So how does a person, when there is no repentance, mm -hmm. deal with the effects or the damage that, has, that they've experienced that they can't, they're not going to have someone come to them and apologize and show repentance because either yeah. they're deceased they, they're not yeah. available. They're yeah. or they're totally yeah. unwilling. But yeah. you, you have the baggage and the hurt and the pain because you you killed my child. Yeah. You raped me. You 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 know all these things. You talked down to me and made me be nothing. Yeah. So how talking practically? Yeah. As a person who has a relationship with the Most High, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how are we going to deal with that without mm -hmm. the repentance? That's, that's what I'd like to That's a good question, Sister, too. Sister Wanda, thank you. Thank you for answering that question. Uh, this, the answer is you forgive. Yes. We still have to forgive. Yes. Because that is what the, that is what, because our, because the, 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 the most high is very, uh, you know, it's a scripture that 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 talks about uh, you know moving moving the mountain. You can speak to that mountain and tell that mountain to jump to the sea. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of um, with a lot of people when they talk about that, they don't they they don't mention the very next line under that that says that's, that 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 Yesiah says that if you off if you have unforgiveness in your heart, then Basically, that is the, the condition of you working your faith. In other words, the father, you can't expect the father to, to move on your behalf if you still have unforgiveness in your heart. So, um, so we 
as believers, we still need to forgive that individual, forgive that person that, that did us wrong. Now, we, we forgive and we, we release it to the most high because most, vengeance is his, mm -hmm. right? So, so for us, we still release that and we forgive. Right. But, but in, in, the, in the context of, 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 the, of, the, of the person that doesn't come to you with a repentant heart, we don't forgive them. We don't forgive them per se because they haven't asked for forgiveness or they haven't came to us with a repentant heart. But at the same time, we still release them. We forgive them. We forgive them so we can be right in the eyes of the God we serve. Okay, let me let me let me uh, establish something, uh, uh, provide some clarity. What what I'm talking about. Let me give you an example first before I tell you what I'm talking what I'm talking about. When a woman is in a relationship that's abusive, and he's constantly abusing her, but yet he's saying, you know, I love you, I love you, but he's showing otherwise, and she's constantly saying, I forgive you, I forgive you. And he's constantly beating his head. Uh, 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 hitting her, beating her, beating her. She like, I forgive you, I forgive you. He's constantly beating her, beating her, beating her. I forgive you, I forgive you. He's constantly beating her, beating her, beating her. I forgive you, I forgive you. How do you deal with that? And what do you consider that? We we, we got to discuss this. And the reason why I said that is because that is the relationship that we as a black people have with our oppressors. We are in an abusive relationship with our oppressors. I forgot what they call that. It's a term. Maybe one of you all can bring it up. Where? Huh? Stockholm syndrome. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about. How do you deal with that when you have someone that is constantly still uh, uh, treating you in a very demeaning manner, uh, disrespecting you, physically abusing you, psychologically and emotionally abusing you? There's no justice on your part. How do you deal with that? Because that's what I'm talking about. Not one individual. I'm talking about group now. Because that stems from our uh, emotional numbness. Because of what has happened to us, the past trauma, we're numb. We have become numb to it because we are constantly in a relationship where we are treated in such a derogatory manner that we become numb to this feeling. And see, that's why it's coming to a head now. You see a lot of this stuff exploding the way that it is because all these years we have been so numb. We, we, we just never really discussed it. In America, we swept it up under the rug. They think, they think that the 60s that came with the civil rights, it made everything smooth. Everything was hunky-dory. And we were A-OK -okay because blacks now have a piece of the pie of the sky. We're all good, but it's not so. How do we deal with that? Because that's why we have that emotional numbness. And if we're numb, you can't heal. Well, you can't um, deal with it. I, I just want to say this. I don't mean to sound insensitive, but I, I have to speak truth. What we have to do, it, it's never going to be right. We're never going to, you know, we can keep forgiving. They'll keep beating us over the head. The common denominator is you. So you have to get your life right with the Most High. Once the Most High begin to change us individually, then we'll begin to wake up, and we and we won't we won't take what the our oppressors are doing to us because the more we seek Him, the more the the Most High reveal things about ourselves. Then we'll begin to wake up out of this sleep that we're in, and we won't. Uh, uh, that relationship would begin to change with our oppressor. So the Most High has to deal with you on that personal level. You can't stop the enemy from doing what he's doing, but you can change what your own actions are. So we, he has to deal with us on a personal level first. Okay. Uh, anybody and that, else? And I see. Yeah. I sure. I, and and I see how. Um, I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> um, I see that. On, on a personal level is us literally, um, when we're letting go, letting go of all of those hurts and pains and um, repenting to the Father, asking for his forgiveness and asking him, being specific on what it is that we did, the, the person that we did, and then the enemy that was coming against us, if they're not going to repent, you have to let it go. Let them go. That means 
it's like it's almost like you giving distant love like yeah i love you but i know what you did so i'm not going down that route with you no more i am now going to stay focused with my relationship with him and my my kin i'm going to love them just like i love myself it's it, it seems like um like when we were given given that example of how being hurt over and over and over again um i think about my life with um the things that i went through and i was being hurt timelessly over and over again and i kept saying i forgive you but i kept being hurt again i forgive you being hurt again i had to literally go before the most high and confessed of what I did and say, I forgive them, but I'm not going down that direction no more. Thank you. That's what was missing. I was waiting for somebody to say that and nobody was saying that. That's the key right there. Mm -hmm. Because we have to have healing. You can't stay in a relationship regardless of whatever it is and somebody is constantly abusing you, you won't have healing. So that's what I was trying to get at you all. Not that I wasn't saying that you, not to forgive. What do you do in that situation when it's constantly happening to you? You don't stay in that situation. You have to exit that. If, they me, are not, if they're not in the position of wanting to change and repent and want to in, 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 in a state of still abusing you psychologically, emotionally, in whatever way, you have to set boundaries for yourself and you have to exit from that relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was see I, I was I was in a relationship. This was a this was a while, a long time ago and uh, the emotional um stress that was there was so heavy. And see before I didn't know that that was a spirit. I didn't know that that was a spirit. It was so heavy upon me until I lost so much weight. And I, I remember I went to the hospital one time and I asked the doctor, I said, listen, I don't know what's wrong with me. He said, oh, you have, um, what's, it, what's it called? Um, post-traumatic. Not a post-traumatic, um, what did he, how did he say it? He said it, it's dealing with you, you, you're having, it's, it's emotionally breaking you down where you can't even hold your food. You can't, you, you vomiting. You, too. It, it, it said it's stress. It's it, mind stress. Wow. And we were going to get there. Wow. I was going to get yeah. to that mind as stress. well. Yeah, but mind stress. And, and I said, hmm. Now and I started to really think about what I was going through. And it was that, that issue that was going on. And I was letting it overtake my mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So good. All right, my niece is on you all, and she wants to say something, and I'm going to give her an opportunity to share. Please come on and share, my dear niece. Thank you, I'm Brenda. Um, uh, good. Well, depending on where everybody is. Hello, everybody. I'm in Central stand Standard Time in Texas. Um, but as I was listening, and I was text uh, texting Uncle, uh, Uncle Men Zombie. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> but right, I was texting. Darren, it's good. <laughs> okay, I'm about to say your name. My phone is Man Zombie Zola, but okay. So, <laughs> but um, no. What I was looking at and 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 listening to was, and I told Uncle, I told Uncle Dem, Uncle Darren, I said, funny enough, a few years ago, Aunt Brenda was the one who helped me through this. Um, I don't know if she remembers. I know when I started talking, she'll she be like, oh, yeah. Um, dealing with, uh, it was what we would call church hurt. Now, I'm 32. I'll be 33 in eight days. And so um, for me, it was a, a, a little different. I grew up in the church. I, I grew up understanding what scripture was, right? And for, um, I, I knew there was a, a still like a transition going on. Um, and there was a battle. And in that, in that situation, it became, and I, I think I'm Brenda, you remember, I know you and Uncle Darren remember, because I would call on Brenda and be crying and she answered the phone middle of the night. And it was, it was mental. Um, it was spiritual. Um, it was emotional. It wasn't physical, but it didn't get there. But physically, I was not allowed to speak. 
And so that was very impactful because it was, it was oppression from a place that you would have never, ex- I, I personally would have never expected. And understanding that um, even with like, you know, like she said, a continuous of pressures, like dealing with that, it was like, okay, so how do, how do I do that? How do I, I deal with society? And it's another level of hurt when it comes from your own people, mm-hmm. right? That's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother impact. And so it was huge for me to be away from family and to deal with that. I had done, I had felt, dealt with racism. That was one of those things that kind of, you know, rolled off my back like a duck because I knew it existed. But it was another level of, okay, dealing with it when it was coming from us, when it was coming from inside of a church. And so what that taught me was, just like you said, hey, she never, the person never asked for forgiveness. I was at that time, um, Brenda was the one helping me <laughs> set, understand those boundaries, telling me, okay, yeah, right now, I know you want to leave, but right now, the God, you know, y'all was saying it wasn't time for me to leave. He was saying you, there was something that I needed to get out of this whole situation. Before I was actually able to leave, he actually had me to do, um, I think you guys probably remember that, it was like a foot wash of praying for that person. I didn't understand it but I was obedient. And once I did that, literally that next Sunday, he said, okay, now you can go. And I've never gone back. And when I saw, I've seen this person two or three times over the years. I just saw her a couple weeks ago. I spoke to her in joy, in peace. There was no hurt in my heart. There was no pain in my heart. There's no pain now in my heart. And that's not me. That was my healing. And I know that it's possible. Even when I see, you know, like she's in, um, like she, you guys were talking about how, you know, how do you deal with that with their oppressor? Okay, I don't have to deal with that person. I don't see her. But I know when I see her, there is no hurt. And I know that was God. You know, I know that was God dealing in me, in that healing in me. He set that boundary. He was like, okay, hey, you don't have to be around that person. And he put that covering around me. So even with, you know, um, our oppressors, when you, when you get to the point when you start forgiving and you do forgive and you have that healing, it's like a covering. To me, it's, it's like he's, 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 he's shielding you from what everybody else is dealing with. You see it. You can help others through it. You can talk to them through it. But he's, it's, not, it's not, how do you put it? Um, that pain isn't that great. It doesn't, it doesn't impact. It doesn't stick as much as it did before mm-hmm. that healing, before that time and pro- and of processing and understanding who he is and what he can do in your life. So that was my two cents. That's all I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I, can I go ahead, Sarah? I'll let you go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, to, to answer the, some of the previous questions, um, in a practical sense that, um, I, we've been talking about boundaries and healing and, um, I think for my own experience, 99% of the time, (laughs) you never get an apology. You never receive hmm. opinion. Right. Interesting. And that's because we are, res- we are responsible for what happens within our vessel and what happens as a response. We, are, we can only be, no one is responsible for how you feel about a situation. And I say that to say, because an aggressor, be, I, I could be offended because you know, Mama Brenda has a head, a blue head wrap on and I couldn't find my blue head wrap today. And so I'm feeling offense, uh, offended. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm saying that in the most mild sense, not to diminish any form of trauma because um, we have the full right and ability and the full range of motion to experience what it is that we experience. But it's our responsibility individually within ourselves to take precaution. And within that precaution, that is where boundaries are established. Yes. And those are personal. And so, so we talk about healing, we, we talk about boundaries, but the biggest and the largest question, again, is how. And it's how because com- within our community, we haven't been given the vocabulary to not only express, but, so, but to have solutions. Mm-hmm. Our Culturally, we are reactionary people we wait till things happen and then sometimes we respond or sometimes we don't and from a personal experience of you know um very early on i remember i um 
I was, I was in high school, I was in college, I was in that transition. And I got to a point where I was like, why do I keep attracting the same people? And, and it was just that small inclination of finding out what it was that I believed, finding out what it was that I liked. And I was asking myself the questions. And I feel like the, the biggest um, phase that we all skip consciously in terms of self-understanding is what do I like? And it's the exploratory stage of finding out. And, and this happens, it, it does happen within your adolescence, but, what, we, but what, it, what isn't highlighted is the fact that it's an ongoing process. We have the ability and the option and the choice to change our standards mm -hmm, and values mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. boundaries. That is a full right to being, you know, self-expressive. Um, so we have the option to choose. And so when we talk about how do we do these things, I feel like the applicable sense is to, um, is to find out what we value and to reevaluate the values we've been given. And, and that means going back to understand childhood that I had, what was told was okay, what wasn't, what wasn't I told that was okay. And really, almost like mentally and emotionally reliving these experiences. <laughs> Why did I experience my mom combing my hair as a trauma? Was it because my mom didn't like her own hair that she started treating me a certain way? What emotional infractions did I experience because of something else? And what is it that I'm acting on <clears throat> in this season as a response? And that is where I feel like the subconscious emotions are allowed to come come to the surface and that is where we unload the emotional baggage before we enter into new relationships so basically establishing values um and reevaluating old values and um under you know mm -hmm. oftentimes we're taught like oh go date go get experience one of the things that i that i am reminded of is that we don't date ourselves so often we look to other people to tell us what we like. Mm -hmm. We look to society to tell us what fashion is, what, oh, this is my body size. Oh, this is what I have to wear. We're, we're often taught by culture and tradition what should happen rather than evaluating our own opinions, our own thoughts. How do I really feel about this? So honestly, allowing yourself to go through the process of, what you like and what you don't like, whether it be literally on paper and writing out scenarios, whether it, whether it be honestly going to YouTube and watching people's testimonies and asking yourself, what do I think about this? Or creating situational experiences. Like if someone is beating me, like understanding, conceptually trying to understand, is that at what point would I leave a relationship like that? And so oftentimes we're taught to, to, to go out and date, but not understanding that to date you have to be someone to off so, so you have to have something to offer and okay. if you don't have the consciousness to understand what you do have to offer it's the prime time to figure it out and and that and i think that's socially been exclusive to people who are single but that is the opportunity and the beauty of within marriage is that two individuals are forever evolving and if the goal within your marriage is to grow the conversation should be, are we continuously, you know, sharpen, iron sharpening iron? Are we continuously growing, reevaluating, establishing new boundaries and standards? And that's, um, so those are just the practical things within myself. Like I said, when I was recognizing my certain behaviors and understanding why do I attract these type of girlfriends? You know, that, that common culture of, hey, what's up, B? Like when, when, that that time in my in, in in stage and age when um girlfriends address each other as certain names or um talk, like you know i'm not a gossiper in by nature i'm not a person that who, who likes to harp on problems and that that is why at a stage in my life i found that i i wasn't attracted to um girlfriends my own age i always sought out older women and that's just because of the conversations. I realized I didn't like to have conversations about certain topics. And it wasn't until I learned or I had relationships where I literally could not tolerate talking to some people and I found myself avoiding them that I recognized that's a standard in my life. 
you know, I'm establishing that and that's okay. Um, but all of those things, I feel like some things don't have to have to come with time and some things don't have to um, be outside of yourself. Some things could be as simple as self, self evaluation and self questioning. Mm -hmm. So, so Sarah, you, you said a lot there, I know. So, <laughs> but, but it's it neat. Good. It's needed. It's good. Right. So, the key thing out of that is you first got to know yourself, like man, mm -hmm. know thyself. How can you be a help to somebody else when you don't know what you want or, or know about yourself? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you got to learn yourself, have an opportunity to learn your, your wants, your needs, your desire, desires, who you are. You also talked about what I brought out, what I was trying to get people to see when you're in an abusive relationship. And the example that I use with the, the, the male and the female, where the male is abusing, and we know it can go both ways, but however, we know for the most part, it is usually the male who is the perpetrator. So before there can be healing, you got you got to, uh, you need to know yourself perhaps you didn't know yourself, you know, and that's why you, like you said, you found out that that's not the type of person that you are. You didn't like those things that in that age, age group. So the second thing is you set boundaries. You set a boundary, whereas you did not befriend people of that age group because you saw something that was not uh, kosher to you, something that you did not desire to be, uh, to partake in. And so that's key right there, us setting boundaries. And we have to understand that for us, for healing to take place, you first have to exit out, remove yourself from that, which is causing the pain when it's physical, that is. And the same thing applies spiritually, I must say. That was the physical example, but the same evaluation has to happen spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So you have to exit out of it for forgive, true forgiveness. To come. Mm -hmm. and true healing if you're still in an abusive relationship there's there's not true forgiveness and there is definitely no healing that is why america is in the traumatic state that is in now in order for true healing to come you know we have to exit from that relationship i'm not talking about the oppressor now i'm talking about the individual because we're talking about healing so you have to remove yourself from that th from that thing which is causing the anguish, you know, or whatever it may be. Once you remove yourself from that, it's not happening no longer. Now you got to deal with, as Sarah said, self. You got to learn self. You got to self-reflect. You got to start dealing with the, the anger, the hurt, the disappointment so that you can heal. Once you begin to heal, forgiveness will come. And we have to understand that. That's, that's what I wanted to focus on. So it is key that we know ourselves, remove ourselves, and, and self-reflect so that we can begin to heal. Can I add? Sister Brenda, oh, let me, I'll say this real quickly. Sister Brenda, um, Proverbs, part of Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And as we are talking about a relationship whereby, let's say it's a woman and the man is constantly saying negative things to her, speaking down to her, she becomes a victim because she's in the relationship and maybe it's a codependent relationship. Maybe it's a relationship whereby she cannot leave the relationship as easily because she's home, she's not working, she has children or whatever she begins to think that she has no out and that she, she's the victim. And she may not even realize that she's the victim because she's thinking, I have no, there's nothing I can do. And I'm saying this in case someone hears this and is in this situation, as a man thinketh, so are you. You have to change your thoughts you have to reach outside of yourself, but you have to recognize where you are, which has been emphasized already. You have to look within and see yourself. But as you're thinking, if you're thinking, I have no help, I have no hope, that's where you're gonna be stuck. And you have to look outside yourself. And I love the spiritual side. We have a Yah who can do anything. Yes. There's nothing too hard for him. You, you reach up 
and you also reach out. Speak, maybe you're not sharing it with anyone. Speak to a good friend. Speak to a counselor if you know one. Speak to a trusted relative, but move. Start doing something to come outside of that box that you're locked in. Yeah. And it all starts with you realizing as you think, so are you. And I, and I have to mention Emeka's teaching, if anyone has not seen that from this channel. And then also ooh, Prince his Bonzi. Yeah. Those two messages are very, very powerful when it comes to how you think and the words that you speak and how words create and how you can literally start saying, this is going to get better. I'm going to get out of this situation. I'm going to be able to set boundaries. Use the power that the Most High has given you through creative words, through creative thought to start making a move to making a change in your life, in your relationship and getting rid of the baggage because we're talking about getting rid of baggage and, and, and we need people to understand there is help and there is hope, but you got to understand your baggage. You got to right. know where you are. You got to accept it and then, uh, you know, take practical steps to get out of the situation. Yes. Um, Tiana, did you wanted to say something else? Um, yes, ma'am. Oh, well, actually, she actually kind of answered some of my questions because I, um, <laughs> I was just thinking in regards to the fact that a lot of times when we are, uh, we look at, you know, like you said, men and women relationships. And over time, I've come to understand that some of the things that I was attracting um, in my past was because of relationships that I had with family members um, that I allowed. And it's, you know, it's one thing to get out of a, uh, like a, a relationship, you know, like I said, with men, men and female, but it's another thing when it's family members, close members that have been there, you know, since day one that you uh, constantly interact with to understand how to, you know, you have to reevaluate those relationships and then set those boundaries. And so <laughs> that has been a big thing for me because it's just like, you know, um, um, for me, I guess this year has just been really the word access. Um, when people have access to you, you know, like you said, those boundaries, uh, letting them know, and, and they're used to what, you know, what they've been used to, because this is years in the make, making, and they, they do it constantly. So it's like being able to have that conversation with them and saying, no, I'm not cutting you off. I'm not, it's not that I'm loving you less, it's that I'm loving me more. And mm -hmm. I'm realizing what I, what I need in order for me to be a fruitful and healthy. And I need, and though they may not be in agreement with it at that time, there comes, you know, again, that forgiveness that you have to say, hey, I forgive you. They may not recognize their, um, their, I don't want to call it negativity, but that what they're doing is not positive mm -hmm. or it's not, you know, good for you, you know? And so therefore, you know, that just moving through that whole system. But again, like you said, you know, um, setting those boundaries, being positive in what you're saying, saying that those relationships can change, will change, are changing. It, that was uh, like I said. I I, I needed to hear what she had just said, so that was all. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's good that she brought that out about that scripture too. Um, mm -hmm. So a man think it, so he is. And wow. since we're talking about you know abuse, we know that statistics says we know that that's not always one hundred percent, but majority of the time, females that are in those abusive relationships. They are females that have low self-esteem. So mm -hmm. it's good that she brought that out. So a man think it, so he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were taught also when we were in nursing school, sharing to, me and Sharon with the nursing school together, the man is able to identify, is what we were taught, females that exhibit low self-esteem. And not only is the, does the female have low self-esteem, but it's the man that has low self-esteem. And yes. because of that, he seeks out a mm -hmm. female that has low mm -hmm. self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And he inflicts that pain on her, what mm -hmm. he's feeling. That's why we're bringing this all out. I said, we're going to, yeah. he inflicts the pain that he's feeling internally upon on her to make himself feel good. He's, he's, he's leashing out on her. And so you have this cyclical thing going on and now he's abusing this female because of the way he feels about himself because he went into a relationship not knowing who he was, 
not recognizing, you know, the, the demons that he had and dealing with those demons. So we, we talked about knowing yourself. Sarah brought that out, knowing yourself, dating yourself. I like that. Mm -hmm. Know who you are before you go into that relationship. So this some some, some good, 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 good stuff here. And anyone, anyone who wants to be married and is, you know, or interested they, they need to pay attention to these signs from their potential spouse. You know, is he controlling me? You know, um, how, what does he say to you? How does it make you feel? Things like that to apply practically in this discussion because it's critical for folks who want to get married to, to look for the signs yeah. and back away if, if it's showing mm, this doesn't look like it's, it suits me or I've made my list or you see these behaviors that are exemplifying their own baggage. So I wonder what others, what are the signs for, for oh. a female to identify if someone that is uh, potentially have the ability to physically, psychologically, emotionally abuse. You talked about knowing the signs. So talk to us about those signs. All right. What are the signs? Well, there's a, there's a lot, but is he controlling? Does he sit back and not take the lead in the relationship? He doesn't want to take the risk. So he allows you to take the, the risk and he enjoys the benefit of that. Um, I know you singles can help with this. Um, is he not as spiritual as you, which could happen quite a bit oh. with us females? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm in that season right now. Mm -hmm. And as a woman who, who uses the most high or, or who uses the, the word of the most high as a compass, mm -hmm. um, I would say and what it, understanding the context of what it means to submit and all of these different things, mm -hmm. sub, submit literally means to come under a mission. Yes. And I have come to a point, exactly what you're saying, if I, as a woman who is to submit and understanding the context and the, uh, and the value of, of, um, of humility and, and what it means to serve and to be a helpmate and all of these, these words that mm -hmm. we use, um, I'm, I'm to the point where I'm, I think we, we as women underestimate our ability to be found in the sense that what it means to be found means that we are the ultimate discerners. We have the ability to scan in the spirit. And I've noticed that perceiving and watching a male's behavior is more powerful or, or almost easier than interacting with him. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, does he respect you? Is he controlling all these, all of these things are things that I can perceive in how he treats other people. You know, is he, is he patient? Is he kind? Is he a leader? What is mm -hmm. he initiating on his own? Mm -hmm. um, what are the, the words? What is, is he emotional? I, I personally am looking because I know I've done a level of, of inner work. So my, one of my standards is I am interested in someone who is emotionally aware of their own actions who can receive criticism, mm -hmm. who can stand within that criticism, acknowledge their wrongdoings and have the yes. effort and the interest to improve themselves, mm -hmm. um, who is a self-improver. So I may you know, be looking for this person to be called out and how do they respond? Or how does this person respond under, under pressure? Do they buckle or are they, again, mm -hmm. are they an initiator? How right. are they with their time? Is their word their bond? Do they say what they're going to do? All of these things, I feel like um, within that process of be, even before interaction, way before interaction, what of course, you know, um, Anna, she mentioned earlier the power of relationships with her family members and how those are subconscious roots to our baggage. And in the same way, when looking for a potential spouse or a partner, or any type of relationship, oftentimes we talk about men just, you know, long-term relational, but there are short-term, um, short-term seasonal and long-term relationships. And all of those are compound relationships to build character. So our parents are our rudimentary and first form of relationship and yes. example of love. Yes. Your parents are whomever's raising you. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they should be and they 
are typically the only non-sexual example of a man and a non-sexual example of a woman. In the context of you have full leverage to expand or to open yourself emotionally to them. And those primitive examples show you how to interact and oftentimes don't show you how to interact. Mm -hmm. And so being self-aware in the sense that, okay, I know these are my strong suits. Okay, I know this is my, where I'm usually spiritually attacked, or I know this is a place where I'm not too confident in terms of my experience or I'm vulnerable. And in the same way that we look for the positive attributes, one of the things that I think is uh, underestimated is we don't look for how things, how, we can be complimented within our weaknesses simply because we aren't self-aware about our weaknesses. And so when looking for a mate or when looking for a friend or when looking for a business partner in any of those relationships, if I know in a business relationship that I am not financially um, sound, I need to have a business partner that is financially sound. If I know I'm a creative, I need you to, to, to have your P's and Q's and, and dot your I's and cross your T's because I know that's not my strong suit. So when looking for a, a, anyone to be in a relationship with, I think it's looking at those positive attributes, looking at their influences, whether it's their family, whether it's their, uh, their relationships, how they treat people. You know, you always get the example of how do they treat the... Um, how do they treat the trash man or how do they treat the, um, the custodian or the waiter? All of those small inclinations are um, examples of their character. I, and so right. the, the list goes on. I could continue to talk, but you get the point. <laughs> One of the other things, too, I like to throw in the mix is he or she, how um, they uh, are... are alienating you from family and friends exactly that's that's the other thing you have to look at are you talking about the uh the abuse what, the, what yes. you have to look for yes mm -hmm. yes yes that, that. So, so i i actually made a list i i can't uh <laughs> admit that i'm just rambling these things off the top of my head i decided i would make a list of baggage that anyone uh looking to go into a relationship and it's really i mean when you think about marriage, you have to realize that this decision that you're going to make and the relationship that you're entering to is like the very most important thing outside of your relationship with the most high that you're ever going to make. It's the most important decision. Mm -hmm. So you have to really, you have to be aware. You have to do your homework. Like Sister Sarah was saying, yeah. you have to know, you have to work with yourself. And you do need to take a look at the signs. Mm -hmm. And when you see them, you have to make a decision. Am I going to run and run and not waste my time? Here's a couple. Fear of rejection. That's male and female. Mm -hmm. um, insecurity. Women can have insecurities about the way they look. Um, insecurities about previous relationships and things that have been said. A man could have insecurities too. And, and, and it was mentioned earlier that if he has low self-esteem, he'll find someone who has low self-esteem and then that they're, they're going to take that out, you know, on the other person so that they can feel, you know, better about themselves. A person that's non-committal, you're in a relationship with them, you know, you're getting to know them or whatever, but you, you can't, and that discussion should happen, but you can't read where he is or where the relationship is going. That needs to be established. Are you courting? Exactly. And, and anybody who has a relationship with the most high and loves him and you're at a point where you're interested in being married that kinds that need to be established up front are you courting you just friends you know those kinds of things need to be done so and if they don't want to touch it then you know that there's some non-committal issues mm -hmm. there there's some baggage they're too clingy you get into a relationship and they're just you, you can't breathe because they, you know, they want to be around you all the time or whatever it is. Maybe they're afraid to lose you because of experiences. They see, ah, she's the one. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're concerned. They're not secure enough in themselves. Or they don't have the personality to, to, to attract you like they want to be attracted. So they cling on to you and then they smother you. Mm -hmm. um, another one would
the, I, and I mentioned this before, emotional uh, unavailability, that works both ways for males and females. Um, mm -hmm. Sister Sarah mentioned this, not taking responsibility for things that you need to take responsibility for and having trouble apologizing. There's, there's some kind of baggage there. Um, a lack of empathy, a person that can't relate to a female's emotions. You know, I, I heard uh, Brother Darren say in one of the teachings that he had to get to the point where I understood he was told to, to see it from her perspective. So a lack of ability to understand a female's perspective and maybe the other way around too, a woman being able to understand a man's perspective is, is an issue where there needs to be work there. Why, why can't you do that? Um, I, I mentioned a wanting a woman to take the lead in the relationship so that they're, they're not at risk. They're insecure and they're not at risk and they want you to you know, deal with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, being too connected to an ex. How's, how connected are you with maybe your children's mother or your dad, the daddy's children, the father of the children, um, feeling like you need to change him. Oh, it's okay. I, I like all of this about him. I'm attracted to him, but if he could just be like this and then in a woman's naivete, cause this is what the little young brides be thinking. I'm going to change that about him. I've been there. You are not <laughs> husband and wives. Please tell them you are not <laughs> going to change him. You need to know that That's what so you true. are marrying. And, and if he is, when he is courting you and you see his best self, he, you, and you're giving your best self, you got to know after a while, you're going to relax. So you need yeah. to come into the relationship <laughs> with integrity. Yeah. Be yourself so he can evaluate you just like you are. Yes. And it's the same thing for the men. If women don't be careful with their mouths when they're talking, you <laughs> men testify, you men testify. <laughs> they, they, will, they will change their conversation because they're hunters. If a man is really pursuing you, he wants to know what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to start talking and saying things like what you're saying. But you want, you want authenticity. You need to show yourself authentically to this person that you want to establish the most important relationship within your life. That you're going to start your life with. You need to be authentic. And, and so that, that's enough on that one. Um, I think someone else said that, and, and I, I do want to, you guys didn't testify about that. You're not going to change. <laughs> married people. I've been married, so I know. <laughs> um, uh, he runs away from conflicts and shuts down. Mm. You, you want to resolve it? And he shuts down. Don't want to talk about it. He'll be silent. Give the silent treatment for weeks. <laughs> you all know what that does to the marriage bed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Blaming others mm -hmm. for um, what their problems are. Mm -hmm. Blaming others instead of, again, this is accepting responsibility. Right. And then uh, being stuck in the past. And being stuck in the past is going to prevent you from moving forward. Yes. If you're, you're trying to establish a relationship with someone and all of your hurts and all of your baggage is still on your back, you, you can't move forward. And if you do, it's incremental because you're carrying the weight. So those are just some examples to, to identify uh, what, what are the things that are preventing us from moving forward in a very healthy and spiritual relationship that could be so beautiful if you allow yourself to be prepared to do the work, stick with the most high, and that person, you know, somebody gave me an example a long time ago about finding their mate. It says, when you see this person running up like this and they're, they're running towards the most high and the other person, in other words, they're just focused on the most high and yeah. they're running beside each other like this. At some point, they're going to meet up. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. And, and, and that's, that's really awesome. But I do like 
that people, when you have baggage, you have got to do the work. You've got to, you got to pay attention to it. You, as Sister Sarah was saying, she's in that space. She's working. She knows. She knows what she should expect of a man. You don't want to get married and don't know what you expect. Mm. And don't have yourself be ready for that. Mm -hmm. And so in our community, as we've already discussed, so many things that we need to be able to do, be able to speak, be able to think, all of these things we need to prepare for so that we can move forward and, yeah. be, and be found as, as we should be, as you all have already taught in the and narrative series. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm done. I was going to say, uh, to attest to that, um, <laughs> no, we, we, can't we can't change anybody but ourselves. And mm -hmm. I'm going to share this. I've shared it with you all before, I do believe, but I remember years, yeah. And I think it was in our first series of marriage, I shared this with you all, where early on in our marriage, we was having a conflict. Yeah. You know? That's just part of relationship. Let's be real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The issue is, how do we deal with that conflict, though? Mm -hmm. Are we dealing with it? In the, in the correct manner, positively or negatively. And so me being a child of the most high, I went into prayer about him. And I told you I was, I was on my way to work and I was praying and, and crying out, change and fix him. And I was literally doing this and I was crying and crying. And I heard a still small voice just say, fix you. Mm -hmm. We can't change anybody. We can't fix anybody. We still have things within ourselves that we need to identify and work on ourselves. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and so what I started doing, when the most I told me fix you, I started self-reflecting to deal with Brenda. And as I dealt with Brenda, I began to see changes happening. Fast forward X amount of years, <laughs> looking back. I'm so glad that the Most High spoke to me and said, fix you. And as Mama Wanda, as y'all want, I'm sorry, y'all want to say, she don't want me to call my mama. It's all right. As I respect your respect. Remember what I said? <laughs> as y'all yeah. want to say, as you're moving up, you know, as you're developing your relationship and your walk with the Most High, we talked mm. about the three chord. If you don't have the most high yes. in that relationship, it's going to unravel because you don't have the support, the glue that you need mm -hmm. to get you through mm -hmm. the tough times, the, the issues that you're, you, you deal with in that marriage. Like him speaking to you saying, work on you, Brenda, and you listening and you taking heed to what he's saying. And then you see the end result because you heeded what he said and you see the fruit of it. So it's imperative that as we, we as a people that we have the most high, that three chord in our relationship because that three binds it and makes it strong to where nothing can come in and unravel it. So a lot of times when we see not all the time in, in our relationship is because we have left the most high out of the equation. Well, he was the one that established the union between a man and a woman from the beginning. It is mm -hmm. that you have him in the relationship because he established it. So uh, Letitia, you were going to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I was just going to add two, two, uh, two points to what uh, Yawanda said. Um, one was allowing a parent, if you see the person that you're courting, allowing a parent to dictate the things that are going in, going on in the yeah, relationship between mm -hmm. you and your uh, significant other, that is a huge <laughs> red flag. Yes. <laughs> um, because I've, I've been a witness to it uh, not in my own marriage. I'm saying like outside, I've been a witness of how a marriage fell apart because the, uh, the wife allowed the mother to tell her how uh, uh, her husband should be treating her or mm. what to do in that relationship. And it spoiled the relationship even to the point where the kids did not respect the husband mm. uh, because of the things that the mother was doing.
So that's that's definitely a red flag. And then there's something that I call transferred baggage, something that you may not have uh, gone through or experienced yourself, but you're taking the word of somebody else, somebody mm -hmm. else's baggage, and you're making it your own. You're adopting yeah. it as your own, and now you're treating the your significant other that you're in the relationship with as if he did you some wrong and you didn't even experience that yourself. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring that up as a point. Uh, I, also, I, uh, I, I, want, I want to get something in for the, uh, for the men. <laughs> yeah. <Good. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to let the, I want to, you know, as, as, as a man, once you realize your role, in the most high you have to watch out and be and be aware because we're talking about know yourself there's a lot of good points that were made about knowing yourself mm -hmm. and the telltale signs of of someone who may experience uh abuse of tendencies and or or controlling tendencies and, and that sort of thing but on on the flip side of that coin uh you know there are a lot of women who don't let their men take the lead. There mm. are just, there's just women out there that just domineer. Mm. And as a man, if you know, you want to be aware of that, you want to, you want to look out for the telltale signs of, of the women who, who, who won't let you take the lead. <laughs> they, 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 they want, you know, they, they want to be in control. They want to, they want to tell you or, or, or uh, you know, just, just, just basically not allow you to take the lead, basically, right? And then you, for men, you also want to watch out for the women who have that Jezebel spirit, that 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 spirit that allows, um, if you know, if your woman, if if you, if you, the woman that has that manipulating, uh, manipulating uh, spirit mm. and yeah. and and con and and all that seductive spirit and and just uh you know when she when she gets dressed and when she gets dressed and and she's wearing the you know the revealing clothes or the tight uh the tight clothes is 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 well you know you have to think well well okay who who is she you know who who is she getting dressed for because you know women have the stock answer where they say well I'm dressing for myself but but right. but we but you know psychologically on even on a psychological level that's not true they're not dressing for themselves they're dressing for others they're yeah. they're, they're, they're trying to attract attention exactly exactly so they attract attention and whose attention are they attracting you know what i mean and so the uh the third thing i want to i want to uh say or the last thing i want to say is is um uh you know you have women out there who are judging their current uh uh, a man or spouse or boyfriend from a previous uh, relationship. So whatever was done to them in a previous relationship gets carried over, and she's treating you some kind of way. And you mm -hmm. know, well, you're like, whoa, you know, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I didn't, I didn't do X, Y, and Z to you. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't. That's not me. And so you, you, when you. Bring we're talking about bringing baggage right into a relationship. So when you when you bring that baggage into a new relationship, you're 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 not allowed. And this is another thing. I don't, I don't want to cut my throat off. You're not allowing yourself to heal. But the other thing too that is before you get into another relationship, you should like really take the time to heal from the yes. relationship. Right. And just like Sister Sarah says. Eval get get to know yourself because a lot of times you discover new things about yourself with uh, with a previous relationship or with or or something like that. So you you want to get to uh, uh, know yourself, and I will add to that: uh, get to know yourself, who you are in the Most High, mm -hmm. because once is you know the Scripture says that uh, consider. Uh, consider uh, Yahweh and 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 all you do, and and basically, if you like like Sister Sarah said, if you use the Most High as your compass, 
and you and his and his ways are now your ways, mm -hmm. and you are able to the decisions you make are it are within the uh, are within the confines of how the Most High uh, what he what he loves is you love, and what he hates is, is what you now hate, right. mm -hmm. and so now mm -hmm. you're able to make a more sound, better <coughs> decision when you're choosing the next relationship you are jumping into. But definitely give yourself time to heal from a previous relationship so you don't mm -hmm. bring that baggage mm -hmm. into the new relationship. Mm -hmm. right. can, can I just add, go ahead, wifey. No, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, you weren't? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to add. That was, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, Brother Rick, because we do need to hear the men speaking, and that was very valuable what you added. Um, one of the things that I heard you say is that if you're hurt by someone and you don't deal with, with that hurt before moving into another relationship, you're going to evaluate everyone from your previous experience. I call that baggage filters. You filter in, in your, your relationship, you're reading your relationship based on the baggage filters that have been established from previous relationships. So when you see someone doing something similar to a negative treatment uh, from the past, you filter your response. Your, your response is going to be filtered by that baggage. Yeah. So those baggage filters are in place and we really have to recognize them in, in our relationships, it could be work relationships, it could be, you know, personal dating or courting relationships, um, those kinds of things that I just, you know, wanted to add to what you were saying, but thank you. And now I can finally speak. I feel like, oh, I can talk now. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> talk now. But um, what I want to say, this has been good. Um, just from talking from childhood trauma to the present of our relationship, I can definitely just see so many experiences, life experiences for myself. Um, one thing that I can truly say is that all of us, whether we are married or single, and I wish I would have known this way before now, that we should all strive to be single. And I like um, the analogy that you had given in reference to, um, and my idea is a triangle if two people are in a relationship and they are looking up mm -hmm. at and my what the spirit has revealed to me and it doesn't matter whatever it is and my mind goes to this triangle in reference to um if it's relationship issues if it's work issues if my focus is that what is if my focus is horizontal and not vertical my focus is in the wrong place and that if two people are in a relationship if their relation if their focus is vertical they're going to continue to move up mm -hmm. and in that we should all strive to be single separate unique whole you separate unique and whole individuals and striving to be all that we were created to be and then we're able to help one another because whether we're in a relationship or not, we are going to have some form of baggage. Mm -hmm. And it's not just at one time we're going to put that baggage off and we'll say, oh, I've dealt with that. It's going to be a continual thing until we leave here. Mm -hmm. And that in that process, we should be able to be open. And what I have learned for myself is communication is the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm being able to communicate that um and number one is being able to communicate that with yourself going back to self-awareness and being able to communicate that to our creator so that he can direct us and lead us um of how to deal with it emotionally how to deal with it mentally and then at that time being able to communicate to communicate it with that person whom we're in relationship with it whatever that relationship may be but um this is just good i just i just love it but that as for right now since we're talking about that that is um my little take on it I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, um, I like what you said, like, especially communication is key because a lot of us have the mindset 
of what happened before you is none of your business. Mm. But if I am, if I am supposed to be pledging my life to you, then it is my business. What you've been mm. through in the past, who you've been mm. through, through it with, the uh, you know what I mean, like. You, you want to know what happened in that relationship um, because it could affect your relationship with that person and your future family. Mm. So, you know, we just have to come out of that mindset of, you know, who, who I was with before you ain't none of your business or, mm. you know, what happened between me and that person is none of your business. That is so mm. far from the truth. Yes, it is. And I and I just wanted I just wanted to say uh, one thing. Um, we we're talking about you know uh, people dating and, and 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 getting into one relationship uh, into the next. We have to we have to. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up uh, soul ties. And if we're talking about doing this in under the under the uh the way of how biblically how it's supposed to be done uh uh yah's perfect will we are not to we're not supposed to be sexually involved with anybody other than our spouse mm -hmm. but for for those who who are uh sexually involved in their uh unmarital relationships you have to understand you have to understand soul ties. And what that is, is that basically you're building each mm. sexual relationship you have or sexual mm -hmm. encounter you have with anybody. You are building soul ties in the spirit realms. This is what's going on, which you don't see mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. spiritually. So you're connecting yourself with that individual, with that person through soul ties. And then you jump into another relationship. And you build a a, a so tight connection with that person, mm -hmm. and you break up, you jump into another relationship, mm -hmm. and you build a so tight with that person. Well, what happens is you 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 find that a lot of times that you may be jumping back to the person you used to date, and you're no longer dating seriously, but you this is your ex. So you find yourself jumping back, and because you can't you still having sexual attractions uh, to your ex. Still connected. And that's why, mm -hmm. because you're yeah. still connected. And so you have to break that soul tie by repenting and, and, and by repenting. And that's the only way you can break that soul tie with all of the people who you have sexual relationships with. And you have to break those soul ties uh, individually. And, <laughs> and, and so, so, uh, that's what happens a lot of time with with um, you know dating women with with baby daddies. A lot of times that mm. that those 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 women are still so tied to the baby's father, and so a lot of times you have them uh, going back and having sexual relationship with the baby's father, and this is. This this typically happens when this this typically I don't, I don't want to say it typically happens in a non non marital uh, 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 relationship, but but when you're dating someone and they still have soul ties with a with their baby's father, uh, that is that is the reason is because uh, because of the soul ties they created with the baby's father that they haven't broken yet, so. So soul ties is just something that has to be has to be talked about, has to be uh, mentioned because I think that I think that that's one of the main reasons why um, you you have a lot of of we, we find ourselves in a lot of predicaments that we find ourselves in because when we engage in sin, we know we when we engage in sin nothing good come, come, come from that. Mm -hmm. And so as long as, as long as you are engaging in, in, in a sinful lifestyle, whether it's fornication or, or whatever, it's going, to have, it's, going, it's going to have its effects in your life. 
is going to have its negative effects in your life. You leave a gate open. Exactly. You leave a gate open. Send Before leave. you start, Letitia, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Look, I want Melakaya to come on and speak. We have an underrepresentation of male on here. And so I want to give him an opportunity to say something uh, as well. Melakaya, can you please jump on? Yes, I sure will. I like to, um, you know, be patient before I say <laughs> certain things. <laughs> um, one thing is, is that when, give me one second. Uh, one thing is, is that when um, us as men, when we, um, when you don't let, like I said, when you don't let go, of those past hurts, all you, you all you're doing is you're bringing on all those past hurts into a new relationship. You know, I look at it from the biblical side. We are really supposed to be courting, courting with a woman, and you are really getting to just like um, what's her, what's her name again? Sarah. Um, Sarah. Sarah. Just like she said earlier, that's exactly the same thing. You're courting with that person, getting to know them um, mindfully their actions, their ways, if they're holding on to that backpack on their back and have never let go, meaning they have never um, confessed and forgiven and let go of their past, a past hurt, whether it was uh, abuse, whether it was um, um, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Um, <laughs> and if, and, and, and if, they, if they didn't, you you will see the most high will bring it to your attention that that is not the not the woman for you um but it does really and not but it does start with the person first the the you know us men because what happens um uh, women are supposed to they're supposed to look up, look upon us because we are to look upon the most high mm -hmm. so the most high is going to bring it to our attention that you know what? Wait a minute. What you're doing is wrong. You need to confess and you need to let it go, and 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 move on. Um, it it it's, it gets deep. It really does. Yes. It does. Okay. Uh, my husband yeah. had some work on his mouth, but I think he's able to mm -hmm. speak because I want to hear the the men perspective as well. We sure. know men are always underrepresented when it comes to things of this nature and also from from a spiritual perspective as well that's that's seen in the church so that's why i wanted you you know we have rick but we don't, we don't want to leave y'all rick gotta have some backup so <laughs> <laughs> that's right right you got brother hanging like rick, that y'all can't rick, brother. <laughs> so rick, rick I'm, I'm backing you up brother i appreciate it man i, appreciate it. I feel like i'm on the front line man i'm gonna back up but i'm good though yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you able to say something to yeah i um i was actually gonna throw something else into the mix uh <laughs> she pushing me back <laughs> i'm not gonna get too close um you know, we talk about the the, uh, the baggage that we bring into relationships, you know, with uh, uh, each other, you know, with women and everything. But what about the baggage also that we bring into the relationship with the most high? Mm. Okay. Uh, and I know um, that, that we're speaking on relationships, but there's still a relationship with the most high. And... Um, as my brother uh, Malachi has said, you know, the, the, and I'm speaking from the women, you know, looking to, or the wives looking to the husbands, you know, um, we have to, as men, as husbands, have to have that connection with the most high because he's our head, he's our covering, all right? You know, we, we heard a lot about the uh, who's your covering and people want to put other men over you as your covering. But we don't know what those other men are dealing with in their relationships. So our covering is the most high. And if the most high is our covering, then we are to cover our wives. And as long as we walk in that way, we know that our relationship will be all right. We know that. Now, someone had, had said earlier that 
we will have baggage, you know, um, basically for the rest of our lives, you know, continually. There can be some good baggage and there could be some negative baggage. Here's the thing, when the baggage pops up, if it is negative baggage, the thing is, pull it off. You have to pull it off. It has to come off. Because if you don't, it's going to ruin the relationship that you're in. It's going to be hanging over your head like, you know, forgive me for saying this, but it's going to be hanging over your head like a mistletoe. And we don't want that. So you got to pull that baggage off. If it's good baggage, make it work. Or is there such a thing as good baggage? Because <laughs> when you look at the definition of baggage, from mm -hmm. what you all have stated, most of you all have stated, it is subconscious, you know, or conscious uh, hurt from past trauma. So is there such a thing as good baggage? I mean, you can um, really use a different word, but either <laughs> way, you could you could call it a uh, your toolbox. I was just about to say it's your toolbox. <laughs> it's your equipment. You have gained because of that negative baggage, but you have taken that negative bad baggage and used it and now you got some tools to work with mm -hmm. <laughs> you got some life experience huh <laughs> right that has taught you some things Letitia you had something to say then we have a question on here we're going to go to that question and after that question uh because our time is just about up I want I want us to go and discuss about the uh the physiological aspect of uh, past hurt, undealt with past hurt, because it deals with us on a physical level as well. So we want to talk about that as well and delve into that real quickly. Um, you know, what I was going to say is really minor. I, I was just going to say that when we sin, um, when sin is present in our lives, we leave a gate open for the enemy to move freely. That's not so, minor, huh? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's not minor. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, what, you know, um, when we don't, uh, cut those soul ties, you know, the spirit that you were, uh, that the person you were having sex with is still very present in your life. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is you're walking around with a lesion of spirits and not even realizing it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, and, and you bring that drama, that drama alone, that baggage, that spirit, spiritual baggage into your relationship. And most times you don't even realize it. You don't even realize it. So I just wanted to say that. Wow. Yeah, because Sister Sharon uh, brought up the, the analogy of, the, of a triangle with the most high being being up top and, and, the two, and the two other sides are moving vertically up. But a lot of times in, in a soul tie situation, you have more like a, a, a hexagon type <laughs> shape where all the points of your previous soul tie relationships, you are all connected mm. to, still connected to those people. Mm -hmm. And you and that's something that needs to be broken. You have to repent and break and, and release those spirits. So that way, that way you can uh, move forward mm -hmm. wow. and not bring that baggage. Right. And that's a... Can, can we go to her, that, her question? Yeah, I was just going to say real quick, that's an interesting point that you made about the hexagon because no one is moving up. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> go okay, to her so here's a question for you guys on the panel. Uh, if you say, take your time to heal, and the person has uh, healed from that, that past hurt, why would the person and his or her or spouse be concerned about it affecting their marriage if healing has taken place so the question is if you've healed from past hurt and you moving on is it necessary you know to even bring that up if you've healed from it i believe i believe that it is and i'll tell you why i say that because what the enemy does is he likes to use things from your past to uh um he uses it as a weapon against you so, yes, you may have healed from that past uh, relationship, 
but now here's the enemy coming in. And if we're being totally honest, we don't always win those battles with the enemy. But your husband is totally clueless of what was happening in the past with you. So now there's a void somewhere in your relationship. And he has no idea what's going on with you. And, and, and the enemy is able to overcome in your relationship. And it affects him. So it, it's, it's, um, it's something that you want to be open with. And just because you speak about it doesn't mean that you didn't heal before. And, here, and here's why it's important for to to have that openness. It's because it's the husband's job to wash his wife with the water of the word. So if, if he is performing his, his godly duties, he can... Uh, he can, uh, he, he can help you or, or by, by, um, what, what, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? He, your, your, your husband can, can be that person that can, um, uh, intercessor. Ex thank you. He can be the, he can be, he can intercess for you. He can be your intercessor intercede, for you. Yeah. Intercede, I'm sorry. He can, he can intercede for you. And so now you have somebody fighting for you. Right. Mm. And, and because now, because as my wife said, the devil plays on plays on your mind. Mm. It plays on your, your confidence. It plays on your self-worth or your self-esteem. And so you have this internal battle going on, but now you have your husband interceding for you to to the most high mm -hmm. and so now the enemy now basically you just ganged up on the enemy you just ganged up on the enemy and so now it's not a it's not a fair fight for as far as the enemy is concerned now you have the most high in your in you know fighting fighting for you and when two people come together and agree yeah what the scriptures say right mm -hmm. it will be done by my father yeah. Now you know what? Now also, when um, the, to with that question um, um, that was um, posed by Anna, um, you you take your time to heal, and the person does. Why would the person need to discuss those past hurts? And and, and to answer that question, well, if you really have healed from from those past hurts, now you're being a testimony to someone else. Mm -hmm. So if I when I look at the the past hurts that I went through, the only reason why I was able to I'm telling you this because I healed from it and I got past it, and now I'm going to help someone else get through it. And I, ha I um, have a question. I'm sorry. I'm sure. No. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have go ahead. Go ahead. Suppose a person heals from a past hurt. They're healed, but they're concerned about sharing whatever that situation was with a, a future spouse. Um, but they're, they're, they've been delivered. Let's say they've been delivered and they, they don't want to share it. What, what would you say to that person? Well, I look at from the my, from my perspective, and that's to the whole panel. Is, but right okay. no, okay. when I look at that per, with that perspective, um, there was a time when I wanted to tell everything, but I saw a way in her that would not receive it correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She would she wouldn't receive it right. Mm -hmm. So I I held back in telling that because mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. and then I would see. Um, see the the ways the ways that she would portray would not receive it in in um in a compassionate way um in a caring way so i I did hold back so I can understand why even with that question, I can understand why a person could not share as much information um you gotta you gotta really you have to have that per, that true personal relationship with the most high in order mm -hmm. for you to to um to heal from it and be able to share your pains and hurts with someone, but the first thing is is that you gotta really get to know that other person too, and make mm -hmm. sure that they so are they really on the right yeah. track, right? So right. they can be able to receive it. That's right. Receive it with an open heart and not be 
um, judgmental. Not mm-hmm. not not so much judgmental because we can we can if we're righteous we can be able to judge someone in a righteous way, but not hold it against you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think about it from the perspective of. If I have a partner and I know my partner is allergic to orange juice and we're at a restaurant and he goes up and goes to the restroom, if he doesn't tell me he's, he's allergic to orange juice, I can't tell the waiter who's about to pour him a glass of orange juice, you know, that he can't have that. But if I have the knowing and the understanding that he's allergic to orange juice while he's not at the table, that doesn't even have to enter into our, our place seating to even intervene. Because I've got, I've got his back or I'm discerning before as, as his helpmate mm-hmm. beforehand. But like you said, um, Malachi, uh, Brother Malachi, Yaya, Malachi, <laughs> uh, like you said, it, it takes a, an initial agreement early on in the relationship to know that interchangeably you all can trust each other with your with your um yep. sensitive mm-hmm. um and what could be insecurities or sensitive um you know issues or concerns because in in i i've been on the the end of both spectrums and um i think that's why currently as a single person the priority list for someone, like I said, who is emotionally competent of themselves and someone who can hold and who has prepared themselves mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to hold and and care for and nurture my own sensitivities. Um, So, I mean, it's enough to do things on your own, but we all know those single people who don't have enough space for, for the next person. You know what I'm saying? Someone driving a two-seater doesn't have room for anybody else. Right. Um, and, and so what my thought is, is make sure that person <clears throat> has room enough in their car for, for you too. And what, all that comes along. Because like we said, a lot of the things being conscious and subconscious, um, some things we don't know until we get into a relationship. And that's completely okay. But are we prepared mm-hmm. to deal with them? Like Mama Brenda was saying, you're going to have problems, but it's how, it's mm-hmm. how you construct, constructively deal with them. So to mm-hmm. answer her question directly, I would just say, um, I would say, yes, it is necessary, much of what, much of what Brother, Brother Rick stated. Um, because the question is, too, how transparent do you want your relationship? And if you want your relationship to be fully transparent and comfortable, so mm-hmm. where you don't feel like emotionally you're holding back something, um, and then it becomes a burden to you personally because you've got to keep things in because you can't be yourself. Mm-hmm. Essentially, make sure the foundation is built. And if it's not currently there, seek and pray to the Most High and pour your heart out to the more, Most High because that is when those vulnerable moments where the Most High needs to speak to you, uh, to use those words to eloquently state what it is that is sensitive to you so that it can be received. Um, but also so that maybe it's not the time, maybe you do have something to tell that person, but it's not the season. Right. And so, and you know, what's so deep, you, you know, what's so deep. I, 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 I'm, I'm was washing my car yesterday and this, this, I know how the most, the most high, um, Isaiah spoke in parables, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's a parable. You wash your car and you want someone to, um, to, to really like this car. Well, first mm-hmm. thing you do is you you wash the outer part of it, right? But what about the inside? You got to clean the inside too. Mm-hmm. So I didn't polish the car, I didn't washed it, um, buffed it out, and now it's shining and looking beautiful. But as soon as I open up that door, I see <laughs> dust, I see uh, cookies, and I see um, stuff all on the dashboard. I see all stuff. Um, on the seats, look like um, 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 gum is still stuck on the seat. No, I need to clean my inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I need to clean that inside. I'll polish it out, buff it out, um, vacuum all of that stuff out of that car, <laughs> and then then get to the windows, spray some of that, um, the, the, the window um, cleaner on there, and and buff it out again. 
before you know it, and then I put a little bit of scent in there. So now when you want, when you get in the car, it smells good too. <laughs> so now once you look at the car, you see the outside is looks beautiful. And then you see the inside mm -hmm. is, 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 com is complete. That, that, that goes, that's the same um, scenario for ourselves also. Shave nice, haircut nice, but what about the inside? Yeah. Mm. Is my inside complete? Am I walking upright with the most high? Am I following every commandment that he's, he's speaking of? And I'm, am, I, am I showing this upon someone else? Mm. That's all I got to say. Now, in, in regards to uh, what Sarah was saying and the question, what came to me was you have to have wisdom. You can't yes. just mm -hmm. go and just share everything mm -hmm. it is with everybody. Mm -hmm. You have to have wisdom and, and insight to know if it is time mm -hmm. and if you do need to share that because it may not be the mm -hmm. time for you to share right. that. You have to have right. wisdom and insight. In other words, you have to be led by the Mwanda and Simi. Just because yes. that's your spouse doesn't mean that he needs or she needs to, to know that at that time. Maybe it's something that if you're not being led and using wisdom and you speak it, it may cause harm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's, That's what right. I was That's thinking. Right. Timing, timing. Yes. You don't just blurt out everything when you first meet right. someone. You're going to push them mm -hmm. away. They're, you, it's the timing. It could be overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you have yeah. to use the wisdom. Now, Manzami Zola said he wanted to say something. I told him mine was very short. I, it's just that we have to use wisdom in our relationship. With mm -hmm. when it comes to share, you don't just share everything just because you're in, in a, a, a relationship. You just have yeah. to have wisdom and be led by uh, the Mwanda and Simi. I, I just wanted to uh, comment off of what uh, Malachi, Brother Malachi, has said. King Malachi, um, <laughs> when he <laughs> when he was talking about the cleaning of his car and cleaning the inside, you know, uh, growing up, we uh, would talk about women and uh, how uh, a woman, you know, uh, would be beautiful on the outside and present herself very beautiful. And uh, we refer to it as a package, like a gift, you know. And um, uh, it, it was said that if you go into a store and you see a package on, its, on the shelf and it looks beautiful from the outside, and you, you purchase that package, and you take that package home and when you open it up, it's all broken on the inside. Mm. <clears throat> you know, that's um, uh, something, you know, that a woman uh, is pretty much hiding because she pre presented herself and it goes with uh, a male as well, mm -hmm. presented themselves uh, in a beautiful fashion, you know, uh, making themselves appear to be everything that you were looking for which I will say, be careful about telling the other person uh, that you're interested in what your interests, yes. what you're looking for, mm -hmm. because they can present to be that mm -hmm. individual that you're mm -hmm. looking for. Mm -hmm. So just keep their mouth closed and observe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Pay attention. But mm -hmm. you know, the package can be beautiful, but it's all torn up and stinking on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, and and to comment too, um, off of being healed by uh, something, you know, and why should uh, the individual bring it up? Um, again, I do agree with uh, what uh, Brenda said um, and some of the others, you know, about using wisdom because you don't want to throw everything out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if what you were healed by happens to come up. Um, I think someone said it can be used as a testimony, as a mm -hmm. teaching moment. Dying. Okay. Uh, so it, it can be used as a teaching moment. You know, not that it's bothering you or still affecting you, but hey, you know, this is what I went through in my past. And, you know, I was healed from it, you know, uh, because I did so and so and so. All right. We're up, you guys. We're a little bit over two hours. <laughs> This is good. We'll talk about, didn't we? Yeah, but we're not, we don't have time. I know um, it, it's been a little bit over two hours and I know people, you know, have to go and do things. This, yeah. this has been awesome. It's, it's much needed. This is a much needed. Mm -hmm.
Oh. Very much, very much. Right here. So um, I thank you all uh, for um, allowing yourselves to be open and yes. sharing and thank you. communicating and, and talking with um, us about how we can heal from baggage. Uh, and if not, we can take that into um, our a relationship and it could cause damage. Real short, I say this because this is what I was going to get into, but we didn't. We're going to cut it off here. Um, and it is uh, that if you don't deal with past trauma, past hurt, anger, so forth and so on, it does affect your body from a physiological standpoint. And um, we call that psychosomatic because a lot of times you will come in you will have stomach ache headaches and they can't figure out they run all kinds of diagnostics and they have no nothing to to uh, substantiate why you're having the symptoms that you're having when it's stemming from anger uh stress and what happens when in our body we have a, a reactionary um, process that take place. You have cortisol released into your body that can cause all kinds of damage on our body from uh, mm -hmm. hardening of your arteries, which can lead to uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. As I stated, you can have um, uh, symptoms in your stomach where you can end up having ulcers or you're constantly having stomach pain and, you know, headaches. You're always having headaches and they can't find a reason to this. Nine, nine, nine times out of 10, it has to do with unhurt pain, anger, resentment, even grudges. Grudges have, has been linked to cancer. If, mm. if you don't know it, it has been from a, a scientific perspective, people that hold on to grudges has been linked to cancer. So for yourself, let it go. For yourself, seek healing. For yourself, uh, 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 um, forgive that individual. And I'm not saying for you to stay in that situation, but forgive and set boundaries. You know, as Tiana was saying, she had to, you know, <laughs> learn to basically, basically separate, not saying that I don't love you, but because I love myself. And so that is key, loving yourself to the point to where you want to heal and you have to set up those boundaries so that you can walk in healness. So with that being said, uh, we're... Say something, interject. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I would like to ask this question uh, to, to each of our panelists, uh, and this includes you to uh, King Malachi. Um, just for a bottom line, um, what would be your bottom line um, of what we have discussed? What is your bottom line as far as I was a process give him a of time to, to close one more, but thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I would say um, to answer the initial question, how do we get rid of our baggage or deal with our baggage? I, my personal statement is um, seek the most high, re self-reflection and prayer and fasting. Those have been mm -hmm. my, my call to action. And that's what I've seen. Um, the biggest change in myself, the biggest change in people around me. And um, I think it's been the, 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 the greatest preparer is seeking the most high and hearing those things from the most high um, that otherwise I would have been too distracted to even recognize. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have, have to, to second a that. small comment if I can, since I'm getting my hair done and I couldn't really comment this has been most powerful 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 conversation and i just wanted to make a statement when you see something the matter with yourself go to your father in heaven say lord i don't like this about me can you please help me change this and this is being aware of things that might hurt others that's hurting you it's all right to go to the Father with the smallest things that you do not like about yourself and fasting and praying. He will help you to get over it and go on the right plane, so to speak. So I just wanted to, while the girl stepped out from doing my hair, I just wanted to make a comment that this has been a most powerful two hours. And I really appreciate what everyone said. And I learned a lot. 
Matando, Matando. Well, Bantu mothers took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> um, but yeah, just going to say, you know, um, work on yourself. And how you do that is through your relationship with the Most High. And everything else falls in place. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, just just consider the Most High in, in, in everything you do. Um, you, I like how Sister Sarah put it. Use the Most High as your compass, and you can't go wrong. And like I said, by you were able by doing that, you are you are able to make the decisions, uh, better decisions on the the direction you want to go. You you have the more than semi uh, being that light to your footsteps and and guiding you on even uh, bringing you to. Uh, Mr. Quote unquote, Mr. Right, or, or your spouse, or even for the men, for for uh, bringing you to your wife, it's it's, it's it's something that we we always like like how I like how brother uh, Malachi put it. Uh, you you have to clean yourself. Always work on yourself, and once you work on yourself, you are uh, better able to. Uh, Except, well, no, you're 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 better you're you're better able to be in a position to um, to uh, have. Uh, <laughs> uh, help me out, man. Help me out. I'm sorry. I forgot. I was supposed to complete your thoughts. That's right. <laughs> And I agree with everyone, what everyone has said <laughs> in um seeking uh in seeking his will and allow even as he directs you, um make those changes mm -hmm. and um become that better person and um I would say, I would say, uh, what I would take away from this session is be willing to look at your broken places. Mm -hmm. We all have them. Mm -hmm. Look at your broken places. But once you do that, be willing to do the work. Be willing to not put the Band-Aid on, but to do surgery. So practically, how do you do surgery? And we've heard people say, seek the most high. I remember I was asking the most high, how do you really deal with baggage? Because this is so serious and it can impact so many people who want to have happiness in a marriage. Yes, yes. The, the Moanda and Simi showed me that deal with it like it's sin in your life that you want to get rid of. Even though you're not responsible for maybe some of this baggage, things that have happened to you, but approach it as you're, you really, it's like a struggle and I want to get rid of it. I want to do the surgery. So you are fasting, as Sister Sarah said, you are praying and you're, you're thinking of it to, for the intensity level is to think of it like it's a sin in my life that I must get rid of. Mm. And um, that, that's one of the takeaways. And then, you know, we, we have to, as believers and the called ones, the children of the Most High, being ye solely, the roles that we, sh we need to know what our roles are and, and be prepared to operate in those roles without the baggage when we get married. And something else that I, I, I wanted to share was that when a man has gotten himself to the point when he's really ready for a wife, spiritually, physically, emotionally, he becomes a magnet. Mm -hmm. Women see that. When they meet a man who's in that position, he becomes a magnet. He doesn't have to worry so much about how I'm going to talk to this woman. I need to, you know, you're trying to find a woman and you're going through them. One, two, three, four, five. Just prepare yourself 
and automatically, because women see that, they see that, and they will be attracted to the holiness in you, the righteousness, the maturity, and all of those things. You won't have to do so much work towards mm. her. It will become natural, but be the magnet, be the magnet, and continue, you know, more than anything, what you, whatsoever you think in your mind, so are you. Do the work in your mind. Prepare yourself for what you want. Put yourself in that position and just give all glory, all glory to the Most High um, for even getting you to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it and I'm ready because you're not supposed to men of Yisraeli. You're not supposed to be single. And women, you're not supposed to be single. He doesn't want you to be that way. So if you're ready then, and you're, you've had the thought, then get yourself ready because he's going to bring that person to you. Malachiya? Yes, that was a lot said. Um, um, what I got from everything that was um, said today um, was truly submitting to the Most High and asking him to correct your issues that you have held on that that baggage that that you didn't wait a minute that bag that baggage that you put on your back <laughs> and it's, it's on your back and it's holding you down yes. all yeah. this time he's saying let it go lay aside every weight <laughs> yes Le lay aside every weight you let it go what happens you feel free more with praise mm -hmm. and those things that you have asked for start to be granted upon you because you have let all that go yes. and that man that woman that you desire is already placed in your way because now you are righteous and you are walking right mm -hmm. unto him mm -hmm. and and we know it don't happen overnight Mm -hmm. we, we, we do know that we know it's a time frame that happens it's progressive mm -hmm. that's right so that's what I got from this to, this today and I am so overjoyed talking to everyone <laughs> I'm glad you came on now um, I'm going to give my list feel but I want you to do something for me I want you to get that bag and put it back on your shoulder Okay, so that's symbolic of the baggage. Um, say something so they can it can spotlight you, the camera. Just say baggage. All these baggage. Okay, you see, he's one hand is holding that that bag. Mm. When we have baggage that we haven't released, let go of, healed from, it restricts us. Yes, we're not able to do what we've been called to do. We're not even able to walk in the way we should walk because sometimes those baggages feel like bricks that are on our mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And so you can barely move. So it restricts us. But the most I said he came and I want to leave it first before I get there, I want to say this. Hurt people hurt, hurt people. others. Mm -hmm. That's why we're talking about this because if you're hurt, and you're trying to get into a relationship, you're gonna, you're gonna hurt others. Mm -hmm. Hurt people hurt others. People, right. Yes. yes. So I wanna leave this passage, you know, with the people to, to think on this and to know, because our message should always direct people back to the creator. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna leave with you Luke 4, 18. The spirit of Yah, this is Josiah talking, that is upon me. Yes, he, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And here's the key. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. So Josiah is there waiting for us to come to him to deliver us, to heal us, to set us free. Just about every, everybody, not just about on this panel, was saying, go to the Most High as well. Yeah, we seek out others, 
to, to voice how we're feeling, just to, to get it out because it's cathartic to get, get out what you're feeling, even to write it. It just depends on the type of person you are. But the key thing is we go to the creator, the creator, the one that created these feelings, these emotions. He know more about these baggages and how it's impacting us internally and externally. And he is the one that can completely and totally deliver us and heal us. And so it is imperative that we go to him, as so many have said, and ask him to heal us. Sometimes we have baggage. We don't even know that that baggage is impacting us the way that it is impacting us. But he knows. So when we go to him and ask him to heal me of all past hurt, pain, anger, you know, work through me and create me to be who you desire me to be so that I can be a vessel of honor for you. And that was my takeaway on that, on this teaching today. Because we cannot be the vessel of honor that he has, that he has created us to be with the baggage and he wants to use us so in order for him to use us we gotta let go oh. hallelujah hallelujah amen, amen. amen. hallelujah amen. all right family i thank you all so so much so oh so many good words of wisdom have come forth <laughs> Big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. So uh, we're going to end it. I thank you all so much, as I stated, for participating uh, in this and sharing uh, your viewpoints and how we can heal. You all have an increased day today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ingeta. 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 All right. All right. Miss Brenda. Wait a minute. Hold on.